Fooly Cooly has developed a reputation for being an extremely high energy, weird, coming of age OVA. The show is so much more than that, of course, as I've personally talked about in length in all of my own videos on the show, but something I thought was super interesting is this. Did you know there was once an even weirder version of Fooly Cooly planned, and the one that we got differs almost entirely from the original concept of the show, save for a few core characters and themes. Today we're going to be looking at the actual pre-planning writings and official project proposal documents as well as early character designs and peek in at the much weirder Fooly Cooly that we never got. Conti the Robot seems to have had a lot of changes both in character and character design through the series. Some of these are partial changes, some things entirely cut, and some things maybe act to aid a little better for context on things that aren't elaborated on in the story we did get. This is an early Conti design, with much more rounded features, and maybe like a laser line for eyesight, it's hard to tell with the sketch, but it's not really the TV head that we know and love today. He also seems to be a bit more bulky in build from the one in the final product. The second design is a bit closer. There's one more stark change here as he looks kind of like a hammer mixed with a TV, rather than the straight TV we got in the final design. It's still a lot closer than the previous design. I think it's honestly really cool to look at all the details on the head here. Finally, another thing to imagine while seeing these early designs is that he was actually planned to be colored and coated in black paint, not blue. And while you're imagining that, here's some interesting story changes or elaborations that I found. First, apparently Conti used to be planned to talk very formally to everyone in all situations instead of his not talking at all, which honestly fits really well with the version of his character that we got. He seems like a very modest and respectful kind of person based on his body language. This is also interesting because he's also mentioned in the pre-planning to have been planned to like smoking cigars. Now that's really confusing because on pretty much none of these designs is there like a very clear mouth, but it is kind of funny to imagine. Canonically, at one point in the show, he would have a crush on Haruko, which remnants of are kind of seen in the show still, with random romantic jokes between Haruko and Kanti. An example I'd think of the most, standing out for me at least, is in episode 5, where she's standing on Naota's head. It makes me wonder how his crush would work with his talking. Would he be very shy and modest in formality, or very forward, formal, and emotionless, well, like a robot? Something we see in the show is Conti working at Naota's dad's bread shop, normally just in the background shots. It's elaborated on in the proposal and initial ideas, however, that he is actually working there specifically so he can save up to buy batteries and fuel for his robot uptake, like a human would to buy food. Conti also had a backstory planned at one point that was ultimately scrapped, relating to a large scar on his head, which I'm not sure that we see on any of the designs available, but apparently it was supposed to be linked to a traumatic event. The pre-planning papers say with this asterisk, need to think of why he departed from Medical Mechanica. Did he escape? Was he tossed out? If we contrive a background story, will it complicate things too much later? Since we never saw that backstory, I think it's pretty easy to answer that question now. Next is Nina Mori, and she is kind of an enigma when it comes to how she was originally planned to work in the story. She has all of episode 3 basically focused on her and her character arc in the series, as well as multiple key scenes throughout the entire OVA. It's weird then that she wasn't anywhere in the pre-planning papers and only has a small blurb in the official project proposal. To give you an idea of how little is written about her, she has even less written about her than Nauta's grandpa, and to make it more insulting, his segment is right below hers on the paper. Not only that, but the few things that were written about her didn't actually say all that much or stay the same entirely in the final project. All it states here is that she's Nauta's classmate and a role model student. Okay, so that stayed mostly the same. Then, sees Naota as a rival and goes to the same cram school as him. This is interesting because you'll see later, Naota was originally planned to be very academic, one of the top students of his class, with an actual goal of his to be passing his middle school entrance exams. This is obviously much different than the actual show, as save for basically one scene by the lake at the very start of the show, we don't really see anything to do with him keeping up with his studies. The final thing about Nina Mori, yes, we're already to the last of her little blurb, is that she chides him at every turn, 
This remained mostly true, but maybe less harsh than originally intended, as she isn't really his rival in the series. They butt heads a little bit, but she doesn't ultimately get in his way. Nauta and her are both very snarky to each other, and she is shown condescending toward his decisions, but not often outright rebuking him or them. Here's some early designs of her though, which is something really interesting. She seems to have gone through the most late stage design changes, and I definitely prefer the final design the most. Although this one looks funny to me because she sort of reminds me of Rei from Sangatsu no Lion here. It's probably the combination of short hair, glasses, and this particular style of coat. I love these types of coats, but generally her final design is the best in my opinion, while I still like the other ones. Okay, now for the really interesting stuff for everyone who's still watching. I'm gonna go through this weirder version of Fooly Cooly that was originally written during pre-planning. The story is almost unrecognizable to the project proposal and the final version, of course. An original plan devised some of the show's themes in a Punnett square on their initial paper that divided all the characters into four categories. Adult adults, adult kids, kid adults, and kid kids. Basically referring to maturity and how some kids have to be responsible and act like adults, and how some adults still act like kids. Of course, keeping the default categories as adult adults and kid kids as well. This idea still emerges itself, albeit a little less completely, in Nauta's mindset in the final series, seeing all these immature adults around him and feeling like the only real adult in the picture. A few new or alternate characters existed as well. Mamimi had a friend character, and instead of the grandpa, Nauta's dad had a different friend character based on the Punnett Square seemingly being an underage girl. Next, I'm gonna throw out a list of crazy stuff that isn't elaborated on very clearly, but really stuck out to me, so you can imply with it whatever you think. A black robot emerges from the teacher's head, teams up with Haruko, and kidnaps a boy. Assumably from the details I gave you earlier, that robot is Kanti, but it isn't necessarily confirmed here, and I'm not exactly sure why it wouldn't be. Apparently, a giant galactic battleship would also battle against the police, and this would fit somewhere in there. Instead of Eyebrow Guy and his group, apparently there was a fraternity planned to be snooping in on Mamimi and Naota's apparent relationship after Mamimi told one of the guys in the fraternity that was hitting on her that she was dating him. That's a lot of information to digest, and none of that is actually in the show. <laughs> so let me reiterate that. There's a fraternity, there's a giant galactic battleship, and there's the police. Another interesting thing that they decided to do is in episode 5 of the original plan, Mamimi ends up dropping out of school, and the finale of the series has one line in the description, on the pre-planning side at least. Haruko becomes an adult, dash, she worries. Since Haruko's main trait is her carelessness and energy, and she also qualifies for that adult kid part of the Punnett Square, her acting like a kid while being an adult, the idea that a first conceived version would end with the weight of her decisions catching up to her, and her maybe feeling this distress, the fact the series would end that way is kind of an ominous way to have ended the series. Who knows though, maybe it actually would have been seen as a positive thing. It's really hard to say, because that one sentence is literally all that's written here, and everything else has to be inferred from basically the rest of the project's details and the finished version we got. Now for more interesting plot details that were almost entirely cut except for maybe possible remnants in the final version. The plot of the first few episodes before all of that I'd previously told you seemed to happen is centered around a cat god of wisdom who lives in the forest and is rumored that if you meet him, you die. There's also seemingly a lot of themes that have to do with decision-making planned. Things written like, to think is to decide, and lots of notes about people losing their minds, and even vague weird statement, Conti hunts for minds, whatever that means. Some of this can still be seen in the final product, as the mind, the head, is where everything comes from. Conti leaves from Naota's mind, so does the guitar, that's how he gets his powers, that's how his strength is used in the series, so maybe that was preserved. There's also obviously many cats in the show, and the idea that Mamimi still sees Conti as some sort of god, but other than that, pretty much everything related to this seems to have been scrapped. Now for the project proposal. That was the pre-planning, that was the initial ideas, that was the initial concept. This is what they actually pitched to Gainax. And surprisingly, 
or maybe not so surprisingly, there were still many changes, including the text that I put in this thumbnail. One thing that is confirmed in the proposal outright but left to speculation in the show is that Mamimi is in fact dating Naota's older brother, but after he went to America, he stopped talking to her, like in the show. Naota knows that his older brother has a new girlfriend in America, but Mamimi is completely unaware that she is being actively cheated on, or hasn't taken the hint that he's moved on. In the show, it all but outright says this in the first episode, with the implication being that Naota tells Mamimi, causing her to overflow in the first action scene of the series. Similar to the completed series, Mamimi treats Naota as a surrogate for his older brother making sexual advances, and the proposal starts with them on a bench overlooking the town, rather than under the bridge by the river. Now, personally, I think under the bridge by the river is a far more unique, interesting, and iconic setting than on a bench, so I'm happy with the change, but that's only the first of a few interesting things to note here. Similar to in the show, Mamimi makes advances on a resistant Naota after his brother is brought up, but the project proposal is much more extreme, with them kissing before Mamimi threatens, I'll have your kid, you know. And now to scoffs and sarcastically replies how kissing doesn't create kids. It mentions also that she is playfully forcing herself onto him, which I would say remains the same in the show, although possibly to a less extreme degree. The script then states that Mamimi and Naota's older brother spent a lot of time together on this bench. This could maybe be drawn to the final project as well, that when Naota asks her at the very beginning of the first episode why she always hangs out under the bridge, that the reason could be very obvious. That's where Mamimi and Naota's older brother spent the most time together. A few quick things. Naota is extremely concerned with his grades in the original project, as I mentioned earlier. It's a big focus on him getting through his entrance exams, and as mentioned earlier, this was almost completely dropped. Other than the starting lines of the series where Naota is working on his homework by the river, this concept and idea is basically not there at all. A couple quick tidbits, Fully Cooly as a title, and Fully Climax, the episode 6 title, were both originally just work-in-progress titles that ended up staying around. Mamimi's robot in episode 6 was originally planned to be a real puppy who ate real food, growing to huge size and eventually becoming this powerful being. I do prefer it being a robot eating cars and stuff, though. That's just way cooler, obviously. The final detail that was changed that I want to draw personal attention to is in Fully Climax, where Naota sees the vision of the Irons flattening Earth. It was supposed to originally show him seeing a vision of Haruko and a young boy with her. In the proposal, it states that this young boy is Adamisk. This is the scene that makes him come back to his senses while he's about to betray Earth in terms of his love and his affection for Haruko. So perhaps this was meant to be him seeing that he was just a replacement for Haruko and that she truly didn't care for him, since there was someone just like him in the past. Something we can take from all of it though is that Fooly Cooly seemed to choose to leave things to speculation far more in the final product than in the proposals. Things are implied and easily assumed, but hardly ever outright stated, and this proposal doesn't necessarily confirm or deny some of the speculation in the final project. Who knows, maybe it stayed vague because they decided against it. I love Fooly Cooly, and I think peeking in on the small production changes really helps me get in the right place of mind in the creative process that made one of the greatest OVAs of all time. Redrafting your scripts does a lot, and considering the amount of reworks and changes that this had, I hope it is very abundantly clear that this project was something meticulously and carefully put together with a lot of time and care, and not just a bunch of random fast-paced cool stuff. There is a lot of fast-paced cool stuff in here, but they took a lot of time to make sure that they got it just right. This isn't nearly all the details though. If you want easy access to some basic information covering the production history of Fooly Cooly, I really recommend the book, The Fooly Cooly Archives. It's packed to the brim with art outside of the anime, full painted backgrounds, concept designs, production notes, and the fully translated project proposal. Unfortunately, I'm not sponsored by this company, but I would love to work with the company in the future, and I am glad that they took the time to at least localize this book. Since I'm not sponsored though, I would like to give a huge thanks to The Single Way Out, Whizbang2093, Dolphinos, Frillneck Lizard, CJ, Sam Lloyd, Jose Ramirez, and all of my other patrons. If you want to help me continue what I'm trying so desperately to do here, 
please consider also donating, or even just help me out in small ways like following me on Twitch or on Twitter. Finally, thanks for sitting through all this. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all soon.